So if you're ready, Bruno, we're happy to um, now sort of bring you forward and you can talk us through some of the work you guys have been doing. Sounds good. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Bruno Alves de Souza. I work for the Digital Intelligence Team, uh, the South Centre and West Commission Support Unit. And today I'm just going to give you a quick demo of the mental health tool that we've been working on in our team. Um, so I've got a quick uh, slide deck, which I'll bring forward in two ticks. I'm going to share my screen now. And hopefully it doesn't break. Let's have a look and see how it goes. Right, can everyone see my screen? I can, or I can. I'll talk on behalf of them all. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, um, so I'll just give a quick intro uh, about the background of this tool and, and what was asked of us. Now, in essence, the, the, the inception of this tool was, was in the Southeast Operating Model Network. There was, there was an ask for a consolidation of mental health sources. Uh, and in essence, what was requested was we needed a focal point for easy to use mental health information. Um, it needed to be subject focused approach and it needed to be above all accessible to everyone. It needed to be evolving and capable of adapting to changing priorities in the mental health landscape. Now, this is quite a big ask. Um, as, um, as some of you or most of you will be aware, there's, there's a lot of mental health data out there. There's, there's a lot of data sources and it comes from various places. So we needed to find a way to do this. So what did we deliver? Um, we delivered a dashboard, a Power BI dashboard with clear multi-subject approach. And it's the dashboard that auto refreshes based on the data sales publication times. So, so this data um, gets automatically downloaded for all these data sources via ETL process. Um, ETL stands for extract, transform and load. Um, and it gets loaded into one of our data warehouses. <clears throat> and then my our Power BI workbook then picks it up. And then what we do with it, we do mapping, we do forecasting, we do SPC and we do KPIs um, to display all this information and make it accessible to the end user. Uh, we've also built an, a, a fil uh, an inbuilt filtering system and is linked to um, a lot of reference tables that enables cross filtering across all these data sources. So obviously all these data sources, they are standalone, but because we need them to talk to each other and we need all the filters to work in tandem, we, we put in the middle reference tables to play together and play, make them play nicely together. Um, and last but not least, we create a bit of automation with DAX and Visual Studio to create the, the creation of complex measures. We're talking about SPC charts and all the standard deviations, upper control limits and lower control limits. Um, this was only possible with a multidisciplinary multi team approach. Um, so we had uh, collaboration from initially from the Southeast Mental Health System and the Central Analytics team doing the ongoing U UAT and continuous work with the product owner. Um, we also had the MA collaboration that helped us with our ETL process, the automation and the data import. Um, and then we had the initial prototype created by the DI digital intelligence team. Uh, we also did some joint work with the insights team in order to, to publish this tool to the website. Um, and last but not least, we did some joint work with the change and release team uh, in order to get all the documentation, all the necessary nodes uh, and all the product notes out and the maintenance of UAT logs and change logs. So what was the end result? Um, so in the end, we ended up with, with, a, with an assurance tool that gives us all sorts of information at a glance. So on the screen at the moment, you'll be seeing screenshots of what's happening, but I'm going to be doing a live demo and show you exactly how this tool works. It's, it, it was quite an interesting piece of work to do. It's still an ongoing project, uh, hoping to get it delivered by the end of July. Um, but in essence, there's a lot of mental health subjects here and they all work quite nicely in a dashboard form. So what does this look like in real life? So hopefully you can see on the screen, I got um, Power BI desktop version, and these are the data sources that we're currently using. As you can see, we're pulling from all over the place. We're linking them all together to reference tables, and they're all talking to each other, which is quite nice because when we want to use filters across the board, they need to all be linked. So what does the dashboard actually look like? So this is the intro page. Nothing very exciting here, just, just a, a quick intro with, with all the necessary logos, et cetera, et cetera. When you press continue, it brings you to a landing page that contains all the necessary nodes, all the contact details, data sharing governance agreements, and the methodology, methodology and data nodes. So our approach within the team is a minimalistic design. So as you can see, all of these, when you publish them onto the web, which I haven't um, 
um, because I wanted to show you the design of it. At the moment, you can see all the tabs at the bottom, but when you publish onto the web, all of these are hidden to the end user. And in essence, what you have to do, you have to use a navigation menu right here at the top. And so when you tap on that, you get given a menu, and this allows you to navigate within this document. So let's go for the core data pack initially. So the core data pack is amalgamation of various measures of various targets, and this gives you an at-a-glance view of how any CCG or STP is doing at any given point in time regarding all the measures that are contained within the data pack. So as you can see, you've got things like CYP access rates, eating disorders, waiting times, access rates for IAPT, recovery rates, etc. And all of this is a timeline view with a target if there is a target, and you can see at a glance if this target is being reached or not. Now, within this workbook, there's quite a lot of functionality, and I'll walk you through it. So there's an exclamation mark here that allows you to have a look at all the, the all the metadata. At the moment, is a bit incomplete, but there's going to be information about where this data comes from, how, how often it gets refreshed, and all of those things. There's a filter button that allows you to bring up the filter pane. And again, we're being a bit unconventional about it because usually you'd use a filter pane here on the side, but the slices give us a bit more flexibility to leverage uh, and to filter data. So you got things like organization type, organization name, and you got measures. Now, at the moment, as you can see, because this is a, a sort of KPI dashboard, this, this filter here does not affect it. But I'll show you in a second, I'll just swap to detail view where this will actually affect the, 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 the current view. So if I hide that again, and if I go onto a detail view of this dashboard, this makes more sense. So you get the detail breakdown for the specific measure that you have selected. And again, if you bring up the filter pane, this is where the slicer then kicks into play. So if you select any of these, the views will change accordingly to show you what measure you're looking at. Um, the other thing that we thought would be quite handy is sometimes when you select um, filters, it's not exactly clear what filters you have selected. So we created a little subtext here that tells you what filters you got selected, like organization type, organization name, data quality consistency, which is the measure that's currently selected. And the charts also reflect what's currently being done. So if, for example, you were to select the CYP, Eat, um, CYP eating disorders, you'll see that the subtext changes. There's a little description here at the bottom, a little gauge chart to show you what the target is and how the specific CCG is doing. And at the moment, we got all CCG selected. So uh, let's quickly select one and see how they're doing for this one. Here we go. So that's now selected. That's how they're doing. That's the target. So if we go on to the next target, the next, um, the next tab, so the next one is learning disabilities. And again, a similar approach. You have an SBC chart, you have a timeline chart, which will contain forecasting once the data gets more populated, and then the necessary CCG STP maps, and then a filter pane that contains all the filters for this specific data set. So you've got things like region, STP, CCG, GP, and the necessary measures. And again, you can scroll down this list <clears throat> and it'll take you to whatever um, measure you have selected. So I'm just going to hide that again. And let's go to IAP publications. Um, this is a quite a complex um, tab. So this one not only contains a lot of measures, but it contains two groups of measures. And you can see there's already some measures selected. So if I quickly take that away. Um, so because this workbook contains um, two sets of measures, uh, so we have percentages and we've got um, whole numbers. I've split these into two three groups of measures. So you've got measure group one and measure group two. And this will then bring you to two sets of measures. So um, it's, in, in essence, different aggregation types. So when you go down to the detail level of this, you can see that this one is being aggregated at an average level because we're talking about percentages. And again, same thing as before. If you go into the measures, you'll see that these measures change accordingly. So if we go into measure group one, and if you go into the detail, when you go into the filter, you'll see that these measures will then contain only the, that specific aggregation. So um, again, let's navigate to another workbook, <clears throat> learning disabilities. So similar, similar approaches before. We try to be consistent across all of our tabs. And again, as you can see, there's a little subtext that tells you what's currently being selected. 
um, and all your necessary visuals in order to explore the data. And again, if you select any of these measures, all those visuals change accordingly. Um, another thing to notice, because this is Power BI, do bear in mind that each of these um, each of these visuals can interact with each other. So if you were to select, for example, in this in this uh, bar chart, if you also select a specific month, then each of these visuals will change. Now, because this is a line chart, that's only going to give you a point in time. But again, this is a table that will only give you values for that specific month. And the CCG and SD map, STP map will then change to reflect what you have selected. Uh, if I go on to SMI, so that's that else checks. So a, a different dashboard approach. We've got at the top the, necess the all, all the six L checks together with all uh, an aggregation of all of them. And when you bring the filter pane up, you can see you've got filtering um, in place, STP, CCG, and any health checks that you might want to select in order to analyze. Uh, like contextual measures. So that's another tab. Again, a similar approach as before. This data is not as uh, extended as the previous data sets. We're working on on encompassing more data for this. But again, same approach as before, SPC, SPC chart, a, time, um, a timeline chart, a table bar chart, and a CCG and an STP map. And again, all of these can be interacted uh, and all of them can be used in tandem. And then you've got the necessary filters here that you might want to select from, all your measure groups, all your measure names. And whenever you select them, you can then check and analyze it. Last but not least, we got a performance data set for the MHSDS. It's quite a big data set. Again, a similar approach as before. You got two groups of measures because, again, we needed a split between uh, different aggregation levels and, again, a filtering pane. And as you can see, when you scroll down this list, there is a ton of measures here to analyze because, like I said before, it is quite a big data set. So when you select any of these, this changes then to accommodate whatever selection you have made. So. In essence, that is the mental health, uh, the mental health assurance tool. I, I'm not going to take a lot more of your time. This is quite a complex tool to work with. There's a lot of work that has gone into this. Um, there's also some facilities here they might find useful. There is a, an email button here at the bottom that gives you the capability once published to send an email to the necessary people with the right subject and the right body. So it does that for you automatically. So in this case, you would create an email for the product owner and myself containing feedback on the mental health assurance tool. Um, and in terms of what is the future for this tool? I'm just going to quickly swap to my presentation, see if it's still in place. So what do we expect to see in the future? <clears throat> we expect to include more mental health topics. There's a lot, uh, a lot of data on the pipeline that I'm still working with. Um, we expect to have theme oriented workbooks. So in essence, it might be that we come to a point where this becomes such a big tool that we will be splitting this. Um, mobile reporting is also on the pipeline once we get to N365. And yes, and and N365 integration and report dissemination. You'll find this in the cloud, pulling from Azure data sources, hopefully in the future. And last but not least, a bit more narrative. So how, how to get insights from this uh, on a narrative driven basis. So it, it's all very good while looking at a chart. But again, you need to explore the data. But if all of a sudden you start getting more insights and telling you this CCG has done so well compared to this measure, et cetera, et cetera. So all of those will be included in the future. Uh, so yeah, we've done the live demo. And last but not least, any questions, uh, feel free to ask any questions that you might have about this tool. And I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, so I see a question from David Chapman. So how much data transformation was done in Power BI? So um, in essence, the, the, the data is loaded into a warehouse, so uh, it's it's not really changed at source. And in terms of data transformation, there's quite a bit that's got into it. So there's there's uh, a lot of sort of uh, pivoting or unpivoting when needed because I like to work with sort of long data rather than wide data. So that gives me the chance to use filters and and, and filter and use DAX expressions to better um, to better work with the workbook. Um, there's also been occasions where there was some sort of cleaning up to do depending on the data source. But apart from that, not a lot because in SSD. DMA does a lot of that for us, so we tend to work that way. DMA has the expertise to load the data, do the ETL process. We then take it on to us to just produce dashboard. So yeah, sort of collaborative working. Uh, Rob Nottingham, fantastic dashboard. Thank you very much. Uh, what is the biggest challenge I faced or we faced when producing? Um, in essence, was finding a common denominator in order to display all the data. We I tried to or we tried to have a look at the data and see 
what was the best approach in order to display it? And to be fair, I don't think we've settled on on an approach. This is going to evolve as people use it. So we receive a lot of feedback, uh, be it positive, negative, constructive, whichever way, and then this gets applied and then we, we go on to the next development cycle and, and improve on it. Um, it's, it's finding the right way to display all this and still be easy on the eyes and simple to use. But yeah, that's that's been the biggest challenge is, is of all these data sources, how do we find a common way to display it and make sure that it looks good. Um, Scott, thank you very much. Uh, that's that's good to hear. And yeah, OK, I think that's all the questions. Does anyone else have any questions for me? Thanks, Bruno. Uh, clearly um, generated lots of positive feedback, and I think hopefully it's given people sort of food for thought in terms of sort of what's possible with um, sort of Power BI and certainly big data sets such as the one that you're working with. Um, one of the questions I just had was around um, sort of the governance and sign off sort of process of it. How many sort of iterations of that are you sort of going through and how regular does that cycle tend to play out? Um, so in terms, oh, sorry, are we, term, auto, are we talking in terms of IG? Um, not necessarily the information governance in terms of permissions, but in terms of people being OK with what you're delivering. So kind of checking back in with the user. Right, the I see. Design. So. Um, Within digital in, intelligence, uh, we, in essence, we will, okay, so as a specific example for this dashboard, we developed a prototype and then we delivered it to a very small group of people. So in this case, the initial group was the Southeast mental health system and all their leads. And in essence, because it's still in the sort of prototype phase, we got a group of about 15 people that use the dashboard and get back to me in terms of feedback. We also have the product owner, which is um, Sabara McKinsey, and we have a team that provides UAT in terms of figures and in terms of how the other numbers are looking like. So that's the initial stage. So that's um, once it leaves prototype, um, it gets expanded onto a wider audience and then we decide what the audience is. Usually we expand it to, to the SCW. And then that's what we'd like to call the beta phase. Once it gets onto beta phase, then we have more people using it. Uh, we receive more feedback. And again, iterative process um, for, for development. The, this feedback gets implemented depending on, on how good we, we think that feedback is. And then after we've ironed out all the kinks, um, then yes, it gets onto a final phase, onto a final delivery phase, which is when it goes out to public and you know it gets delivered up to a um, wide audience. Fantastic. Um, thank you. Bruno. Um, so I'll just give a three, two, one to any other questions. If anybody wants to raise their hands, I think three, two, Debbie, one. Debbie Hunter. Mm -hmm. How long did it take us to get to this point? Um, I'd say it took us about two months from the initial. Okay, so it. Uh, so we started working on this around March time uh, and it was the initial prototype phase where we were just hunting around and deciding what data sources we were going to use. So that was that was the, the sort of um, research stage where we decided what data sources were going to go into this. But in terms of designing the workbook, I'd say about two months and a half. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Thank you very much. Um, so Obviously, Bruno will share his details in terms of any questions and feedback mm -hmm. you might have after the event. Unfortunately, you can't stay with us um, for the rest of the morning. You've got something much more monumental. <laughs> um, thank you. Your time. Um, but thank you for coming, Bruno, and sharing that yeah. with thank us. Thank you very much. As this is being recorded, I'll definitely be checking later on because I'm always interested in these things. So thanks again and thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you.